The family stone and their death hope it gives. The holidays have always been difficult for me for two reasons. One, often being the only deaf person at the table, and two, being one who has spent nearly their entire lifetime being without true friends and family to spend them with. Now, even though on paper I'm like the Grinch or Scrooge when it comes to holidays, truthfully, I love Christmas and a good, sappy Christmas movie. This is probably because I'm a masochist who so loves to torture myself by watching what I've never really had and want to have. Q being recommended The Family Stone. The Family Stone is a Christmas set movie about a man who brings his conservative girlfriend home for the holidays to meet his liberal family and everyone has to deal with each other and their differences with Meredith, the girlfriend, in the house. One of these family members is a deaf brother named Dad, who is played by an actual deaf actor named Todd, so that's great. The thing to keep in mind is that while the movie doesn't focus on Thad and his deafness, except for about a minute as a topic in conversation, it is something that I naturally focus on a little as a deaf person. I mean, how many movies have deaf characters in them, especially deaf characters played by actual deaf people? Thad is the only deaf person in the family. He's also the only one who signs fluently. You see his family signing, but it's more... Choppy and clunky, so it's hard to know whether or not they're fluent, but because it is so choppy, I'm going to go with the assumption that they're not. I know the actors themselves are not, but that's the actors. We're talking about the characters they're playing. When they do sign, it's usually only a few signs that barely cover the entirety of the English sentences they're speaking. But given the fact that they also rely on his hearing aids and lip reading, I think it's safe to say they're not fluent and maybe not even that conversational, except for his sister Amy, who you often see interpreting things to him from time to time. Second to Amy would be Susanna. Outside of his biological family, you have his husband, Patrick. And boy, do I have some stories about having had a somewhat signing hearing partner and one non-signing hearing partner. Most deaf children are born to hearing parents, to a predominantly hearing family. Most of those deaf children's parents don't take up signing, and the deaf children often don't have access to sign language themselves. I was one of those children. I didn't get access to ASL until I started to try to seriously learn it myself in my early 20s. I also didn't have hearing aids until a year ago, years after both of my relations chips that I'm going to talk about in this essay. But from the looks of it, that I did have access to sign language along with his hearing aids, something you don't see as often in real life, so it was nice to see in this movie. It was also nice to see Amy and Susanna interpreting a lot of what was said from Meredith to him, like the scenes taking place in a car and in the living room when everyone was together. Dad looks very happy in this film with the various ways of communication that he has with his family, and it seems to remain that way throughout, something that I and many others have struggled with in real life. And as I continue to talk about this, let me make something clear. This is my personal experience that I'm talking about here. No, this is not the experience of all deaf people. Many of us, yes, including myself, but not all of us. But again... It is mine. Now let's continue. I grew up with a hearing father and a deaf mother. My mother grew up speaking German and then learned English later. No sign language of any sort. When she moved to the United States with my father, she never picked up ASO. And of course, neither did my American father. So when we finally figured out at age 11 that I was at the time hard of hearing, I remained a mainstream student with no access to deaf schools and ASL, hearing aids too. They put no effort into trying to make sure I knew my rights in regards to accessibility and the like, and made no effort to learn ASL even as I started to learn. In fact, my mother has always felt like sign language was beneath her. So any outings as a trio were filled with spoken language. 
and the rare moments when we travel and have gatherings with family on the other side of the country, the last time was many moons ago. It was filled with spoken language. Add in the other layer that is having a terrible relationship with my parents due to an abusive mother and an enabling father. It's been quite the life experience. We no longer even barely half ass celebrating holidays, nor would I really want to with them. Even if we had, it wouldn't feel like celebrating holidays with a family. It only feels like a survival tactic where the abuse victim has to spend time with her abusers to try to avoid more abuse following that evening. In my first relationship, my then boyfriend started to learn ASL around the same time that I started to learn. It was a journey that we took on together. He signed with me when he knew how to sign something. He would sometimes interpret for our friends if he could. One on one, or even with just another friend or two, this was great. But during larger family get togethers, it wasn't as much. Nobody else learned ASL. It was a struggle getting everyone to write or type what they were saying. But even if they did, nobody really wants to have their entire conversations be solely or mostly on paper. It takes too long and it feels awkward and unnatural. A lot of my talk. A lot of the time, my ex would interpret conversations for me, which was nice for a bit, but eventually it grew to be tiresome relying on him all the time. I didn't want to have to be attached to him 24-7 like a lost puppy. Every holiday family gathering had a fight with him. With any hour like clockwork, I would be overwhelmed by everyone talking to me in ways I didn't understand despite knowing how to more efficiently communicate with me. Everyone would be talking across tables at dinner, or everyone would be talking at once in a circle in the living room during White Elephant. Stories would be told, and everyone would smile and laugh while I sat there just looking at everyone while words and noise went over my head. Everyone would have to constantly be reminded that I existed, and within seconds, I would be forgotten about again. I can't remember a gathering that didn't have me in the bathroom or in the basement crying with my ex following me and then a fight breaking out when a door shut. Everyone knew it too, but nothing ever really changed. And that eventually became one of the reasons as to why that relationship ended. I didn't want this to permanently become a part of my yearly calendar for the rest of my life. In my second relationship, my ex could not have been bothered to learn ASL. In the two years we were together, he knew about five signs in the alphabet and even struggled with those. His prime way of communicating with me was typing on a notes app on his phone. It was an inconvenient method of communication that made everything twice as long as they needed to be and shouldn't have been used as much as it was two years into the relationship. His family never learned ASL either. But one positive change is that his family, mostly his biological dad's side, would have an iPad open on the table with a notes app and voice to text on. This made following along a bit easier, although still slow as you'd have to restart the mic for every sentence. During one-on-one -on -one conversations, everyone would type or use voice to text more. Sometimes they needed a little reminder if they forgot but for the most part, I was important enough to them that they at least remembered to do that much. These were all nice things to experience, but it didn't change the fact that nobody in his family, including my own ex-boyfriend, was going to attempt to learn ASL. Yet, I would put in more effort than anyone trying to understand words I couldn't hear and learning Portuguese for his stepmother's side of the family. When I watch Dad with his family, how happy he seems to be, I'm so happy for him. But it also makes me sad that it's something I've yet to truly experience in 31 years. And although I'm one with no friends and family, and one who hasn't been invited to or had a gathering since those relationships, I always wonder, should those days come again, that I do go, if I ever will get to feel the peace that he does. 
The feeling one gets when they don't have to beg their hearing partners and friends to start learning ASL to communicate with you. That happy feeling of being with a family that actually loves each other and treats each other with kindness and respect, and one that actually tries to be accessible and on the same playing field as their deaf child and sibling. Not necessarily with my biological family. That's a ship that sailed a long time ago. But perhaps with a chosen family that actually sticks. Maybe one day. Until that day happens, if that day happens, at least there are movies like The Family Stone that give me even a sliver of hope that it will. I'll also be here alone in my room watching horror movies to pass the time.